happy Monday. Come on in. Pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Today is Monday, April 15th. This is episode 283 of The Daily Dope. So, weird, weird weekend. Weird past few days, actually. So going to get into that in just a bit. Today, I am going to be doing an unboxing and first look at Tiny Towns <laughs> from Alderac Entertainment Group, or as those of us in the know like to call them, AEG. So that will be coming up in just a few minutes. So do want to mention, this is a live stream. So if you are watching live, be sure to chime in. Say howdy if you'd like, or maybe if you've got a question, fire away, or maybe there'll be something about tiny towns that you'd like to get a closer look at. By all means, chime in and uh, I will respond. I do have to point out that chat is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the stranger commenters at bay, but I do pay attention to the chat. So if you watch the video and you do like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you dig them, by all means, please subscribe and ring that little bell because not only will that notify you when a new video is available, it'll also tell you when the stream goes live Monday through Friday evenings. I believe the notification is usually within about five minutes of the stream starting because that's about when people start popping in and showing up in chat. So, uh, anyway, as I had mentioned, weird few days, uh, no news tonight, because honestly, there wasn't really any tabletop gaming news that came out that really was floating my boat, was really sitting there going, wow, I really, really want to get this news out there. So, probably a shorter show than usual tonight, which, yeah, that's okay, I mean, that's all right. So, as I started to say, uh, pretty strange kind of weekend, even like the end of last week. So first off, um, towards the end, of, I, I want to say, I think it was Friday. I found out, I learned of the passing of a gentleman named James Smith, who, uh, who had this blog, had this old school Renaissance blog called the dreams of mythic fantasy. And, uh, he had been running that blog for quite some time, had a lot of old school Renaissance gaming news, opinion pieces, uh, some reviews once in a while, but it was a really good source of information about smaller publishers, especially popping up on drive through RPG and uh, some of their old school Renaissance adventures or modules as we may want to call them. Uh, but I found out he passed away last week. I want to say, I think it was on, I think it was on the 10th. So my condolences to his family out there. Uh, I had never met James Smith, but uh, I was familiar with his blog, and I had popped in from time to time. So, uh, unfortunately, he uh, he's no longer with us. And strangely enough, <laughs> he was a year younger than I am. Mm hmm. So, so then, uh, so then we have uh, a bunch of snow in the Chicago area yesterday. I mean, it wasn't only in Chicago. But uh, it was crazy. It was snowing all day long into the night. It was nuts. And a lot of snow piled up. And then, of course, today it's almost all gone. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that was really weird. So, and then, of course, I guess, you know, winter's here, right? Because last night was the premiere of season eight of Game of Thrones. I was really looking forward to it. So, of course, I got to watch that, so I enjoyed that. No spoilers here. Not spoiling anything. Although I do uh, I do appreciate how all these different characters who were kind of together to begin the show in Season 1 are all kind of returning together 
to Winterfell, which uh, which is pretty pretty wild. So enjoyed that, and then get up this morning and find out that Gene Wolfe, the famous science fiction fantasy writer, passed away. So I was like, oh man, what a bummer. Uh, Gene Wolfe that was not a super popular. Uh, well, okay, so let's, let me rephrase that. He wasn't like an extremely famous science fiction writer as far as, uh, you know, non-science fiction or even fantasy because his most famous work was uh, a series of four books that were kind of science fantasy, to be honest. Um, but uh, he, he wasn't as well known as, say, like Isaac Asimov. In my opinion, way more talented than Isaac Asimov. One of, one of the finest science fiction fantasy writers that we had ever seen. In fact, a great American writer, period. Because uh, his work was uh, very unique. Very, he had a very unique voice. And uh, he'd won uh, Hugo Awards, Nebula Awards, all these uh, James Campbell Awards, things like that. So, And he was a... Uh, he actually spent most of his life living around the Chicago area. In fact, at one point, I think he was out in Batavia, which is a suburb of Chicago, and then he moved to Peoria, which is a little further south. It's not really considered a suburb of Chicago, but uh, it's yeah, kind of middle of the state. So sorry to hear he passed away. I believe it was either last night or earlier today. All right, so what is cooking on the show this week? So, of course, as I mentioned, I'm going to unbox and take a first look at Tiny Towns in just a moment. On tomorrow's show, I'm going to be reviewing Kanban Driver's Edition, the great designer series number nine from Stronghold Games. So that is going to be on tomorrow's show. Then on Wednesday, I am going to, I got to back up because this box is really big. I'm going to review Ghost Front from Flying Pig Games. This is the expansion for Old School Tactical. So that will be coming up on Wednesday show. On Thursday, we're kind of going back to back with Mark H. Walker stuff. I am going to review Dark War Rebooted. I was going to try to shoot a standalone video this weekend for this as well as um, the... Uh, Judge Dread Cursed Earth game from Osprey and uh, I just I just didn't have time. I just did not. Plus yesterday was real, just the weather was so bizarre. It's like I didn't feel like doing anything. <laughs> Got to be honest, except read and then watch of course Game of Thrones. So, uh then on Friday's show, I am actually going to do the review for The Cursed Earth. Yes, The Cursed Earth Judge Dread from this is from Osprey Games. So that will be on Friday show. And then on next Monday show, ah, I got stuff stacked up all over the place as usual. I will be reviewing Forum Trajanum from Stronghold Games. So we've got uh, some Stronghold Games stuff coming up over the next week. And uh, a couple of uh, double dips from uh, kind of Mark H. Walker, although he did not design. Ghost Front, but it is for Flying Pig Games. That is his company. So that's what's coming up uh, throughout this week and into next. So do want to point out that uh, if you are a fan of the Daily Dope, if you like the Gaming Gang website over at thegaminggang.com, coincidentally, you probably already know that uh, this is a not-for-profit endeavor. So if you do like the show, if you like the website, please consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund at the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Lil Bub's Big Fund actually provides grant monies to various different organizations around the country who care for special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. So these animals could, uh, could require medication. They might be blind. They might be deaf. They may be older, like yours truly. Or... They could have some mobility issues, but uh, nothing that warrants not giving them a loving home. So, as I mentioned, Lil Bub's Big Fund does provide grant monies to these different organizations. And since Lil Bub's Big Fund launched about five years ago, 
Lil Bub has raised uh, over a half a million dollars to uh, to help special needs animals through a lot of various different things. Uh, I know that grant has done a half a million dollars. There are a lot of other things that uh, Lil Bub and her owner, the dude, have uh, actually taken care of. I believe through Halo Pet Food, they've actually been able to provide something like, if I remember right, I think it's like seven million uh, bowls of food for special needs animals. So that's over about a five year period or so. So very, very cool. Um, I'm a big proponent of uh, yeah, animals in need, just animals, period, pets. I am not a PETA guy. Don't, don't even go there because I like pets. I like animals as pets. I do not think that my pets have the same rights as I do. <laughs> you know, I don't think they should be out there voting and things like that. But uh, I do care about care about animals and uh, love my pets. All right. So as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at Tiny Towns from AEG. It's designed by Peter McPherson. I'm guessing it's McPherson, not McPherson, just because of the uh, spelling. It's with artwork provided by Matt Paquette and Gong Studios. The game is for one to six players, ages 14 and up, plays in around 45 minutes, and it does carry an MSRP of $39.99. So let's pop on over to the other camera. There we go. Here's Tiny Towns itself. Nicely done. So, um... This is actually there's there's been a lot of um, a lot of buzz about this game. Uh, now, granted, I I don't know if it's just simply buzz that's being generated by AEG or if uh, if it's because uh, you know they they've been known to uh, to kind of uh, pull the wool over people's eyes. I'm not in a bad way, but uh, as far as uh, creating uh, interest in some of their titles, Smash Up is a perfect example. Smash Up, when it first came out, I mean, when it was first announced, I thought, what the hell? I'm like, come on, really? And then at Gen Con, all these people were playing it. Everywhere you looked, people were playing Smash Up. And uh, that was actually part of the plan from AG. But, but Smash Up is a lot of fun. So, I mean, I can understand that, but it was kind of like uh, a lot of the buzz was kind of artificially <laughs> kind of pumped up a little bit. So let's take a look at the back of the box. All right, so you are the mayor of a tiny town in the forest where the smaller creatures of the woods have created as a civilization hidden away from predators. This new land is small and the resources are scarce. You take what you can get and never say no to building materials. Cleverly plan and construct a thriving town and don't let it fill up with wasted resources. Whoever builds the most prosperous tiny town wins. And as we see, it's about 45 minutes, one to six players, ages 14 and up, as I had already pointed out. Let's get the shrink off of this. I do want to say that, uh, first of all, let me grab a sip here. It's a little, <laughs> I always say it's dry here in the duct tape studios. It, like it's something different, like it's something new. Like suddenly one day it's going to be like, wow, it's kind of humid down here. It happens once in a while, but that's like in the summer. There we go. Let me wet my whistle. All right. So, uh, in a in a way, this almost strikes me. Now I'm sure it's gonna be completely different, but uh, it's almost got that same sort of vibe as Everdell, right? You know, you're creating a town, but uh, I'm sure this is gonna be very very different. Now, one thing I do see is the 14 and up. I am going to guarantee you that it's 14 and up because there's going to be small meeples in here. There are going to be small playing pieces in here. I guarantee you that is why it's for 14 and up. There is nothing that I've heard about this game that would lead me to believe that you need to be uh, a, a teenager to be able to wrap your head around the concepts or the rules of this game. So it's important to keep in mind, as long as you know, you, you know, you, maybe you have children who are, 10, 11, 12, and you know they're not going to pop stuff in their mouths because the 14 and up is is just an American thing. But because, uh, you know, people fold up their strollers with babies in them. <laughs> so, you know, 
You gotta put uh, put warning labels on it. Do not fold with the child in it. But uh, I would think this this appears to be very very family friendly. So as long as you know you can trust your kids not swallowing tokens and pieces from a game, you should be all right. Uh, all right, so it's showing your objective is represented by a 4x4 grid in which you place resource cubes in specific layouts to construct buildings. Each building scores victory points in a unique way. When no player can place any more resources or construct any buildings, the game ends, and any squares without a building are worth minus one victory point. Damn you, victory points! Player with the most wins. There you go. All right, so what do we got here? Taking a look through the rule book. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can get a better peek at the rule book here. There we go. So let's talk about the setup. Recommended cards for the first play. Oh, okay, so this is going to be a game where the deck is going to uh, be a little bit different uh, for when you're just learning how to play. I kind of like when, when games do that. I think that's kind of cool to uh, kind of uh, ease you in. Uh, and I, I see that quite often. So here are the, the resources we've got. So we've got wood, wheat, brick, glass, and stone. Wonder if, uh, I wonder if any of these critters have heart glass. <laughs> yeah, I know, a little blondie reference there. It's so talking about monuments. A monument is a special type of building that can only be constructed by the player holding that card. Players may only construct their monuments once. Monuments may be constructed in any round, just like a normal building. Upon constructing a monument, the player should read the monument card aloud, place it face up in front of them, and resolve any immediate effects. If the card grants an ability, that ability takes effect immediately and only applies to the card's holder. Scoring for a monument card is resolved at game's end and are not part of of the general supply so it shows title what's the building type then we've got our artwork here resource build pattern and then building ability and scoring so that's the kind of breakup of how the cards look talking about the round overview master builder names a type of resource all players must take a cube of this resource and place it in an empty square in their town grid simultaneously players may construct any buildings for which they have the matching resources in the correct shape once all players have placed their resources and constructed buildings a new round begins okay so we've got a building construction example we've got the different rules up here we've got a scoring example so it says playing without monuments this board would score two wells two fed cottages, a chapel, three taverns. There you go. Right. That's perfect. <laughs> you've got you've got four cottages and three taverns. Sweet. Hey, nefarious Coel's popping in. Oh, wow. <laughs> it says YouTube notifications slower than old people traversing stairs. Sorry. Gotta, you gotta realize the show's usually on at seven o'clock central time. So that's eight Eastern, five Pacific, uh, give or take a couple of minutes. So, well, not give or take. It's either seven o'clock or a few minutes afterwards. So I have actually had some people hanging out um, in the uh, in chat before the show starts on a few occasions. So, hey, good thing you popped in, Nefarious, because you are the winner of the John Carter PDF because you, I believe, were the only commenter on the video. People just don't pay attention to the contest sometimes. So uh, do me a favor. When, uh, when I come back where it's, you know, me <laughs> on the screen, you know how my uh, email address is down in the corner? Shoot me an email. I will get you a copy of the core book in PDF. Yeah, you really can't rely on the live stream notifications. I had been told that it's usually about five minutes, about five minutes after it. What's this game called? It's called I Win. Actually, we're taking a look today at Tiny Towns 
from AEG. This is something that uh, Mara and the AEG team have been uh, really, really excited about. So, uh, so this is kind of your, it's a, uh, it almost has a kind of vibe as like Everdell, where you were building a town. Uh, except with this, you're just doing the buildings. You're not actually like recruiting critters and things like that. So, uh, pretty short. We got look, looks like what eight pages of rules. Talking about completing your town, we've got we were on the scoring example here, and I was laughing that you've got four cottages and three taverns in your town. So uh, I would think everybody should be uh, in good shape there. So you got warehouses and empty squares. So empty squares co uh, cost you victory points. And we got town hall rules. Town hall is different a different way to play tiny towns that introduces the resource deck and changes the way resources are selected during the game. Huh, okay, that's kind of cool. Then we got a solo variant. So this is for one to six players, as I had mentioned. Building clarifications. So it looks like we've got quite a few different building types. And then we've got uh, some different monuments available as well. So altogether, like I said, eight pages of rules. Looks pretty simple, considering that the core game <laughs> takes up all of five pages of rules with loads of illustrations. So and then we get the uh, the optional town hall variant there so we've got uh got the different i think this is the variant for the for you to be able to uh select the resources differently because it almost sounds like you're supposed to like one one player is the master builder every turn and then they select a resource type out of the five different resources so we got all the pieces in here which represent why this is ages 14 and up so because we've got all of these different bags of tokens discs different cubes so these are all representing buildings here so just taking all these out so we'll take a look at these in a sec. And I am taking a guess that uh, that this hammer represents the player who is the master builder that probably sits in front of them and it moves around. I'd take a guess probably clockwise around the table. And then as we saw, we've got those monuments. So this is the monument Let's do it over the black so it shows up a little bit better. So that is the little monument there. So we got six of those. Yep. So I believe uh, each player can only have one monument. So that's uh, that's part of the deal there. So let's get these cubes. So these cubes here show us the various different resources. So we had we had wood, wheat, stone, glass. Uh, what was the last one? Brick. That's the orange. So these are all the resources here. We've got the player boards. So each of the, the players will be placing their resources on the board here. And then they place their buildings. So what I believe is going on. We got a tracking sheet. This is, might be a score sheet. That's kind of, I guess, nice as an extra. These little score sheets. So I would think you could probably calculate this stuff out in your head. Or a little pad of paper. So we've got that. We've got these really nice, nice component quality here on these boards. So we've got black. Black, I think. I thought I saw black as a warehouse. So let's zoom in a little bit. So we can kind of get a better look at these. And I will use this kind of as a backdrop. So that. 
There we go. That's better. So that, I believe, let's take a look. And the book will tell us right there. Oh, no. Um, so it can be a bank, a factory, a trading post, or a warehouse. So that's what those can be. So uh, I see that we've got these cards down here. So I believe these cards are going to be what determines what those happen to be. So that can be one of four different things. Bank, factory, trading post, warehouse. So that's for the black building there. Now this, obviously enough, as I get this opened up, this represents a chapel. All right, because we saw that, you can kind of tell. That's uh, supposed to be a chapel there. Uh, so that represents an abbey, chapel, cloister, or temple. So all very similar, very similar things. Uh, so Nefarious says, I'm surprised a Euro game doesn't have some kind of cube-based score tracking. Although I'm not very familiar with Euros. All depends. You know, a lot of times you'll have a game where you've got a, tra a score tracker that runs around the board, runs around the edges of the board, and you'll have like a cube or a marker that you'll just be moving along. That happens a lot. Um, that tends to be, those tend to be games where right away people know exactly what your, what your score is by where, you know, your little token is on the scoring track. Whereas this might be more along the lines of uh, you got to pay attention to what your other players are building to keep up. So uh, that might be kind of a, a built-in aspect of this design. So, uh, yeah. So, yes, as Nefarious says, yeah, that's what they usually see. Right. Uh, some Yeah, sometimes there's a, a separate tracking board. Uh, a great example of that is like Carcassonne. Carcassonne has a little scoring board that's off on the side because that's a tile lane game so you really don't have a, a standard board that's always the same okay so these are like i said abbeys chapels cloisters and temples and they all have kind of special aspects of them too so i will be uh taking a look at those cards and we'll see that okay so green is green can be Alms house, feast hall, an inn, or a tavern. <laughs> oh, jeez, they're all kind of, kind of the same. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got those. Okay, so next, what do we got? It's like farms. It's like farm building almost. Yeah. With a silo next to it. These can be farms, granaries, or so I've heard people say granary. I've always called it a granary. I don't know. Maybe I'm just stupid. Uh, it can be a greenhouse or an orchard. So that's what those represent. And we've got this aqua, almost like a teal color. It's kind of small. These are cottages. So. That's all that these represent. Those are always cottages. So we've got those. And then we've got these yellow. And these represent bakeries, markets, tailors, or a theater. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Furious is like, yeah, you're pronouncing granary correctly. I know, but I've heard people say granary. And to me, it's like, what do they sell? Grandmothers? <laughs> Grandfathers? Yeah, you want to go get a grand? Go on, go get them. Uh, they're older, so they're discounted. So those, as I mentioned, those are bakeries, markets, tailors, or theaters. So those are all the different kinds of buildings that we've got. And then we've got this deck of cards. Let's take a look at this other deck of cards. I, like I said, I think this is just the optional one. Where this is just an optional way of playing rather than having the master builder say, okay, everybody take glass or everybody take brick or everybody take stone. You actually will utilize this deck of cards 
and just kind of go through them like that. So for an example, it'd be, oh, flip that over, stone, discard it. Well, okay, so it's not shuffled up, right? Hey, look, wow, it's all stone. It's only stone in this deck. Yes, it's not shuffled up, but just kind of give you an idea. Uh, I would think that that just takes some of the uh, some of the pressure off some of the players. Maybe people don't want to uh, don't want to be that master builder and say, "Oh yeah, you got to take this." Uh, I would think that this also comes into play as far as probably in the solitaire game. Uh, yes, bestiary. Yes, I'm with you on that one too, nefarious. Because I always said bestiary. And then someone, uh, not very kindly, <laughs> which usually when people are correcting me online, they're not very kind about it, uh, pointed out that no, it's pronounced bestiary, which I think is kind of odd. I mean, because it's, it's a book full of beasts. It's not talking about, hey, this is the best whatever. Okay, so let's take a look at these cards. All right, come on. Come on, you. There we go. Ye old heavy knife. So I think... Remember, I, I have not played this game. Might as well zoom out a little bit. Uh, it's an unboxing. It's not a review, man. So... Although I had to laugh. I had... If you watched the show last week... I was talking about the guy who complained about the gaming news before get, I went into the unboxing. And uh, they were like, uh, yeah, before the unboxing and review. It's like, no, it wasn't a review, dummy. It's like, jeez. All right, so. Um, oh, okay, so these are going to be different. I thought these were all going to end up being the same. So, yeah, so I'm kind of curious. So what was, what is this little disc? What were they? They're like a gray disc. Oh, they're right there. <laughs> Stupid me, didn't take them out. They're uh, almost uh, almost look octagonal here, but uh, I don't know what the I don't know. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be for. Let's take a look because we know it's not because it's on the scoreboard too. It's on the score pad. Are, is that just to mark a blank space? I don't know. I'm just kind of curious. See, because we even see it here. This. Oh, they're wells. That's what those are. They're supposed to be wells. Okay, so we've got... There we go. So we got well, fountain, millstone, and shed. That's weird. Did I not see that when I was looking? Oh, no. They're, uh, they're in there. They're right there. There we go. Okay. So we got those. And then it looks like they all have the same kind of build pattern. Because I believe when you're actually putting your town together, you have to put your resources in rows or in specific kind of designs just like this. Okay, so then it's like uh, plus one victory point for each adjacent. I think those were cottages. So, okay, so yes, yeah, so they they take they require the same kind of building uh, layout, but their special effects are different. So okay, so that's cool, cool artwork too. I like the artwork. All right, so we've got uh, those are the wells. Then we've got. Uh, These here were the tailor, the theater, the market. Hey, there we go. Finally got some, uh, some. well, I guess there is some artwork with little critters, but can't really make them out. So there's the critters there. And there's the bakery. So you see, this is how you're going to build. You have to have these resources in that diagram. These are a little different, too. See? They're not completely identical. So we got those. What else we got? Let's take a look. 
Seeing there wasn't any news tonight, uh, things can be kind of, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, just kick back and do this. So the various says the internet, where you can always find someone to complain about anything. Oh, yeah, you certainly can. People will argue about the stupidest things. Really, really will. So we got the temple, we got chapel, we got abbey, and we got a cloister. So we've got those. We've got the green ones here. <laughs> this is where all the boozing goes on because we got the almshouse, the inn, the tavern, and the feast hall. So, oh, wow. So this is kind of like based on the number of the green ones. You'll get various, various different victory points. Oh, that's kind of weird. So if you have one, it's worth minus one victory point. If you got two of these, they'll be worth five. If you have three, it's minus three. That's kind of weird. Okay, then we got a bunch of the purple. Oh, the purple are the monuments. Okay, so I would think these are all going to be different. So we got the obelisk of the crescent. <laughs> Maybe it's the croissant. Hmm, the dish. Uh, Mandra's Palace, Barrett Castle, Shrine of the Elder Tree, the Architects Guild, and as we can see, all of these have different building patterns. Statue of the Bond Maker, Grand Mausoleum of the Rodina, Silva Forum, the Sky Baths. Oh, hey, what's with these nude birds? Grove University. Cathedral of Katarina, Archive of the Second Age, Fort Ironweed, the Starloom, and Opalize Watch. Okay, so these are all the different monuments. Those are the ones that uh, are, are these here. So even though each player is only allowed to build one monument, there are a bunch of different monuments here. Okay, then we've got the ones that... Uh, Kind of like warehouses, factories. There we go. So we got factory, warehouse, trading post, bank. So every player is going to have something different as far as what these different buildings represent on their board. Oh, yes, Pinky has arrived to complain a little bit. Relax, Pinko. So then we've got the farm. Orchard, orchard, duh. orchard, greenhouse, and the greenery. So we've got uh, we've got those. So I'm kind of curious. Do we? And then of course we've got the cottage. That's just one card. So I'm kind of curious. I'm gonna take a look here real quick. Um, okay, there we go. So right. So I was going to say, you've got to have cards that get laid out. So it looks as if we've got one of each type that are laid out here like this. So I would take a stab. Okay, so then we see each of the players get two monument cards. So they've got an option of building those monuments. Then we've got the different cards here. And I wonder, I'm curious if... If, say, for an example, we see a tavern. This is the tavern card. I'm curious is if this tavern gets built, does it get replaced with the other card of that type? So, uh, so that's the green card, right? So I'm curious. Once I go through the rules, I'll know. But So, for an example, if the feast hall is the card that's out there. So if the feast hall gets built, does this get removed from that from that line of cards and get replaced with the next one in line? I'm curious. I don't know. This seems pretty interesting. For some strange reason, now I might be way off here, but for some strange reason, I thought... I thought that this game was, like, originally, like, a, a Japanese game or something like that. Maybe I'm completely wrong... Maybe that was a, a different game that uh, Mara over at AEG was talking about when I talked with her last uh, at Gen Con, last Gen Con. 
but I could have swore that this was it. But it's not marked as a big in Japan release. So maybe I'm wrong. No, it's Peter McPherson as a designer. Okay, so I'm way off. I am way off then. My apologies. So we've got the different building cards. We've got the different resource cards here. We've got six of the building boards, which uh, are also your town layout once you're done. We've got all the different shaped tokens. We've got the cottages. We've got the farms. We've got the chapels. We've got the warehouses. We've got the alehouse, the inns and stuff. We've got the wells, which I didn't know what those were for a few minutes. Then we've got, uh, these are like the theater, tailors, stuff like that. We've got the master builder and the monuments. And then we also have all of the resources. So we've got all that stuff. We got the score pad. The eight pages of rules. And that is what we find when we take everything from, get that out of the way, Tiny Towns outside the box. As I mentioned previously, Tiny Towns is for one to six players. Uh, it's from AEG. It's for one to six players, ages 14 and up. It's 14 and up simply because of all those, those tokens in that. That's why. It, it, I, we can tell from the eight pages of rules, this is not something where it's like, it's. we're not talking about a GMT war game here where you're going to be like, mm, wow, I got 40 pages of rules to read. So it's just it's just a thing because of the, the small pieces that could be swallowed. The game does play in about 45 minutes and carries an MSRP of $39.99. As I see the camera has listed again. I just have this, this arm just never wants to stay correctly set up. There we go, because I'm like, nah. Anyway, it does carry an MSRP of $39.99, and it is available now. So I will have a review of Tiny Towns very shortly. And it looks kind of fun. I, I sort of like, I like Euros that were kind of, you're kind of building things. Just like I'm like a big fan of Carcassonne. I like Carcassonne because it's, kind of like a puzzle but it's very to me it's very relaxing <laughs> no i don't know anyway but uh i will have a review of tiny times very soon so that is it for tonight's show as i like to always point out when you're not watching the daily dope be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews comics movies tv well, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Do want to point out, I've got uh, three reviews. One's going up later on tonight. Three RPG-related reviews from Sammy Yuhas, who uh, obviously these are written reviews, so you, you miss them uh, if you just watch the show. So definitely check those out. Uh, Nefarious, you can contact me at the email address that I'm pointing to right here. Right there is where you can contact me. And I will send you a link for uh, John Carter of Mars, the core book in PDF. All right, so I will be back tomorrow. As I mentioned, tomorrow I am reviewing. Where did I put it? It's under this. Let's stack these in the right order. I'm reviewing Kanban Driver's Edition from Stronghold Games. This is a uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty mental heavy lifting game, so I will uh, I will talk about that. It is a it is a very very heavy euro, to put it that way. So uh, I will be reviewing that on tomorrow's show. So until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday night, nefarious, and anyone else who's watching live. Thank you very much for joining me once again. And of course, for those of you watching this after the fact, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here.
And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.